All right, continuing in chapter three, let's look at empirical and molecular formulas. So let's get some definitions first. A molecular formula shows the exact number of atoms in each of the smallest unit of the substance. So for example, if we have H2O as our molecular formula, it really does mean that we have two atoms of hydrogen, every one atom of oxygen, and that is how our formula exists. Now, empirical, instead of being the actual number, it is the simplest whole ratio number. So some of these are going to be the same. So for example, the simplest whole ratio for water is H2O. It cannot be simplified. But on the other hand, hydrogen peroxide is composed in a sense of two OHs. It's so its empirical here is going to be OH. That is the simplest ratio of whole numbers of elements in the compound. Now, glucose here, if we look at this, we can divide this whole mass by six, and we are going to get CH2O as the empirical. For ozone, it's just some ratio of oxygens. And for our N2H4, our simplest ratio is NH2. So we're going to need to recognize what these are. Again, molecular is the exact number of atoms. It is the correct actual formula. Empirical is just the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in the substance. All right, let's go back to peroxide. We know peroxide is H2O2, and we know it's empirical is OH. And if we look at it, we realize that we are going to have two of these packages of OH within one of these H2O2. So to go back and forth, we have to be given some stuff. So let's say that we are given molar mass of our actual substance, which in this case is peroxide, and our molar mass is 34 grams per mole. If we take our molar mass of the actual stuff and we divide it by the molar mass of the empirical, now the empirical is one to one, and it's going to have a molar mass of 17 grams per mole. And if we take and we divide that out, we are going to get the two. Or if we look at it, we have two multiplied by the empirical is equal to the molecular. Or the molecular divided by the empirical is the number that you need. Another example on this would be, let's say that the molar mass of some compound is 78 grams per mole, and its empirical formula is CH. Well, we've got to figure out how many of these CH packets fit into the 78. So we're going to calculate the molar mass of the empirical. Well, that is going to add up to 13 grams per mole. And we know that n, however many of these empiricals we have, multiplied by the molar mass of the empirical, is going to equal the molar mass of the actual, which is 78, or 78 over 13. You do the math here, and that's going to equal 6. We're then going to factor that 6 in, and we know we have 6 of these CHs. We don't write it like that. We write them as subscripts, and we're going to have C6H. Now, how are we going to actually find the empirical formula? Well, to find the empirical formula, we have to realize that the empirical formula is going to be a ratio of moles of the atoms in this substance. And we've got to get to the simplest ratio of moles. Now, to do that, we're going to have to start out with the mass, because that's what we find in the lab. We know to go from grams to moles, we're going to divide by the molar mass. And then we're going to divide by the lowest number of moles to get this nice mole ratio. So an example. We have a compound that's made up of copper and sulfur and oxygen. We need the empirical formula. The empirical formula is going to be the mole ratio. And it's going to be the simplest mole ratio of the atoms. But we never start out with moles. We start with grams. So if I have 0 0.150 grams of copper, and 0 0.0757 grams of sulfur and 0 0.151 grams of oxygen, I know to get the mole ratio, I have to convert this to moles. Convert to moles, I need the molar mass. So off the periodic table, there's one mole of copper for every 63.55 grams of copper. 
and this is going to give us a total of 0 0.00236 grams of copper. And I will do the same for the rest of these. One mole of sulfur for every 32.06 grams of sulfur, and that's going to give me the same 0 0.00236. That's not mole, I apologize. Not gram, excuse me, that's mole of our copper and our sulfur. And my oxygen is going to be one mole, 16 grams. And that's going to give me a total here of 0 0.00944 mole of oxygen. Now, that helps, and we know that there's going to be more of oxygen than there is copper and sulfur. And we can look at this and realize that copper and sulfur are one to one, but we need the simple whole number ratio. And these are certainly not whole numbers. So our next step here is going to be to divide by the smallest. If we divide by the smallest, we can start getting ourselves a nice whole number ratio. So these two are easy. This is going to be one to one. And I've got one copper for every one of our sulfurs. If I divide by the smallest, 0 0.00236, I'm going to get four oxygen. Now these are moles. And my formula, and this is going to be copper sulfate, is going to be CuSO4. Do put the metal first because we know that this has to be ionic. Now, for a lot of these problems, we're not going to start out with simple grams. We're going to start out with a percent composition. Now, a percent is going to be percent by mass. And it's going to be percent by mass of each element in the total compound. So what does this mean? Well, if we have C2H6O and we want the percent by mass, we're going to have to figure out how many grams of each element we have and divide it by the total molar mass. Well, the total molar mass of this stuff is 46.07 grams per mole. And then we're going to multiply each element by its mass. So if I've got copper, I've got, or excuse me, carbon, I've got two carbons multiplied by the molar mass of carbon divided by the molar mass of the compound multiplied by 100 is going to give me the percent by mass of copper. And I can do that for every element. Now note, this is percent out of 100, so these had better add up to 100. So let's do our example. We want the percent by mass of each of the elements in sulfuric acid. So let's do this, sulfuric acid. We know that we have to put enough hydrogens on to cancel the charge on the sulfate. And we know it's sulfate because it's atic itis. So we're going to have SO4. We know this is 2 minus, telling us that we have to have two H pluses. So sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Now, to, to do this, we need the number of grams of each element out of the total. The total molar mass of this stuff works out to be 98.08 grams per mole. So the percent by mass of hydrogen is going to be the grams of hydrogen, which is 2 moles multiplied by 1.01 .01 grams per mole, divided by the total, which is 98.08, multiplied by 100, is going to give us a percent by mass of hydrogen of 2.06 percent hydrogen. We can do that for the rest. One mole of sulfur, 32.06 grams per mole of sulfur, divided by the total of 98.08, multiplied by 100 is going to give us 32.69% by mass sulfur. The last would be 4 moles of oxygen, 16 grams per mole of oxygen, divided by the total of 98.08, multiplied by 100 is going to give us a total of 65.25% by mass oxygen, and these are going to add up to 100 percent. That is the percent by mass of each element. So let's use this and do a calculation. So frequently we have percents by mass. Now if we have 24.75 percent by mass potassium, this means that I've got 24.75 grams of potassium out of 100 grams. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out here with our mass percentage, and we are simply going to assume 100 grams. If we assume 100 grams, our mass percentages 
go straight into our grams. What do I mean by that? Instead of doing percent, we have grams, we know they add up to 100, and we're going to have 24.75 grams of potassium. We're going to have 34.77 grams of manganese and 40.51 grams of oxygen. We know in order to make this work, we have to convert some grams into moles using the molar mass. So let's write those down. There's one mole of potassium for every 39.10 grams of potassium, and that is going to give us 0.633 mole of potassium. For manganese, we have one mole of manganese every 54.94 grams of manganese, and that is also going to be 0.633 mole of manganese. For oxygen, again, one mole for every 16 grams for a total here of 2.53 mole of oxygen. Now, we know there's more moles of oxygen than manganese, but we need the simplest whole number ratio. So our next step after we go to moles of each is divide by the smallest number. So we're going to divide by 0.633. And if we divide by 0.633, we're going to get one potassium for every one manganese for every four oxygen. And we are going to have KMnO4. So what happens if it doesn't come out to nice, clean ratios when you go down here at the end? Well, we're going to have to work through this one. So our last example here is vitamin C. We know that when we start out here with mass percent, we're going to assume 100 grams. We're going to convert from grams to moles by dividing by the molar mass. We're going to divide by the smallest number of um, moles to get a nice mole ratio. And then we're going to have to deal with changing to integer subscripts. So starting out with 40.92 grams of carbon, 4.58 grams of hydrogen, and 54.50 grams of oxygen. Molar mass off the periodic table, one mole for 12.01 grams of carbon, giving us a total here of 3.407 mole of carbon. For hydrogen, one mole for every 1.01 grams. That's going to give us 4.5 five mole of hydrogen for oxygen one mole every 16 grams and this is nice because it works out the same as the carbon and you get 3.406 mole of oxygen and those two are close enough now note this is not a whole number difference we haven't got double the amount of hydrogen or four times the amount of hydrogen we know it's some smaller value so we're still going to divide by the smallest that step doesn't change if we divide this by 3.407, we're going to get 1 to every 1.33 to every 1. Now, we cannot round. We have four sig figs in this question. So we're going to have to deal with this by looking at what this is in terms of a fraction. So if I have one mole of carbon, if I put this in a fraction, I realize that I have four thirds mole of hydrogen and I have one mole of oxygen. Well, because that's a three in the denominator, I can multiply this entire th thing through here by three and I have three carbons for every four hydrogens, for every three oxygens, and I have C3H4O. How might this look? Well, you might get one to 1.5 one, realize the 1.5 is the same as three halves, and you'd multiply this through by two, and you'd get your whole number ratios, and if instead it's 1.33 or 1.66, you're going to have to figure out what is on the denominator. My advice is to try to convert it to a fraction, and then see what you have to multiply through by to get a nice whole number.